Welcome back to AlgoJS. Today's question is leak code 58, the length of the last word. All right, so this easy question has given us a string S containing words and spaces. Return the length of the last word in the string. A word is a maximal substring consistent of non-space characters only, right? So we all know what a word is. So what we have to do is return the length of the last word. So we have the output of five here, and that is because world is length of five. In example two, we have an output of four, and that is because moon has a length of characters of four. The only issue here is that we have this trailing space right here which we need to take into account when building this algorithm out. So let's discuss two different algorithms. The first is going to be using built-in JavaScript methods, right? So in example two, we have this trailing space and we really need to get rid of this in order to start counting the characters within Moon. And one way we can do that is by using the trim method. And what this is going to do is it's just going to remove trailing spaces. So we're going to remove this, we're going to remove this, and then we can start counting the values. So let's build on top of this. We can also use split here. Because we currently have a string, if we're able to convert this into an array containing each one of these words, then it will make it much easier for us to calculate the length of it. So if we split based on an empty space, this will return us an array of all the words within the string. So in example two, the result would look like this. Great, so now we have an array containing all the words. All we have to do is now select the last word within this array and then use the length property to return the length. It's that simple. So in terms of of time complexity for this algorithm, well, the two main operations that are going to be taking out time are these two. Now, trim has to iterate through each character within the string. So this is going to be O over N, where N is the length of the string, and split also has to iterate over each character within the string. So it's going to be O of N, where N is the length of the characters within the string. Now, if we add these up, we get O of 2N. Now, with this asymptotic runtime, or more specifically, big O notation, this is more concerned about scalability, right? So if we have a large data set, so the largest data set here is 10 to the power of four. So say we have a string of length 10,000 characters, right? Compared to a string of two characters. As we scale up using big O notation, this constant right here is going to become more and more negligible. So we can drop this. So this can be simplified to ON. And space in this case is also going to be O of N because we're allocating extra space here for this array. Now an interview could ask you a follow-up question to this, and the follow-up question could be something like, try coming up with a solution without using any built-in methods. So we cannot use trim or split. So how can we do that? Well, one approach is to iterate through this backwards. We'll have a count variable, which is initially set at zero. And the idea of this count is just to count each character that we visit, as long as it's not an empty space. If we visit an empty space, what we're going to do is return the count at this point. Because we've reached an empty space, it indicates that we're at the end of the last word, or the start for that matter, but we've counted backwards. However, there is a slight problem with this solution. If we take a look at example two, we start off with an empty space. And if that were the case, with our current logic of a while loop that we're iterating through backwards and counting every character we visit and returning when we visit an empty space, we're going to be returning zero here because the count is set at zero and we started off by visiting an empty space. So we need to make a check for this. And the check is just going to be if we're at an empty space and count is equal to zero, we're just going to ignore this and iterate left. And then we can repeat the process and add up the count until we reach an empty space. And as soon as we reach an empty space, we return the value of count. So let's run for an example. We're at an empty space. Now we said if we're at an empty space and count is equal to zero, well, we're just going to ignore that. So we're going to move over to n. n is a character. We can increment count to one. We move over to o. Count can be incremented to two. Repeat the process. We move over to the next o. Increment to three. Move over to m. Increment to four. We have now reached an empty space, in which case we can return the count. Now complexity for this algorithm is going to be slightly more optimal. We're going to have a time complexity of ON, where N is the length of the characters within the string. And space, in this case, we aren't allocating any extra space to an array in this instance. So space is going to be O1. Right, let's dive into leak code and start coding out these solutions. Okay, so let's quickly run through the first solution together. So firstly, we need to trim the string. So string is going to be S.trim. Now that we've trimmed the trailing spaces, we can declare a constant called words, and we can split the string here. And what we're going to split by is an empty space. And what this is going to do is it's going to return us an array of all the words, and then we can just return words, words.length. So we're getting the last word within the array of words, and we're getting the length property from this. Now we can clean this up, so let's grab the trim from here. Let's bring it down, let's add it in here. Don't forget to add the dot notation, and let's remove this. Now let's give this a run. 
Okay, great. So that's the first solution. Now let's do it without using the built-in methods. So firstly, we need to declare a variable called i, and this is going to be the index of the last character within the string. Then we need a count variable, which is just going to count up the characters within the string. And then we need to start our while loop. So while i is greater than or equal to zero, right? So it's not the first character in the string. If the current character we're on is equal to an empty string and count is greater than zero, well, here we can just return count. So what this does is it checks if the string is empty and count is greater than zero. Now this is really important having this count is greater than zero because imagine if you had example two where we have a trailing space. If count is equal to zero, then we want to avoid returning count and we just want to iterate backwards. Else, if the current character we're on doesn't equal an empty space, then we can increment count. Yeah, because we visited a character within the word. And lastly, do not forget to decrement i because we are in a while loop. Right, so we've covered all bases here. We've covered the base where the current character is an empty string and count is greater than zero. This just indicates that we've reached the end of the last word. So we can return the count of that word. If the current character is equal to an empty string and count is equal to zero, we're not going to hit this if block. We're not going to hit this else block, we're just going to decrement i. And then if the current character doesn't equal an empty string, well, then we're just going to increment count because we visited a character within the word. All that's left to do then is return count. Let's give this a run. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.